morning. How many of you had a very busy weekend? Nobody? Yes, yes, yes. I did. I think I drove, I don't know, how far was it to Palm Springs? 120 miles. 120 some miles. So I went to Palm Springs, came back, went to Boyle, no, Baldwin Park, came back, all in one day, two parties, tummies full, celebration, new baby, and a graduation for Sessie's party. And I'm like, I'm really tired when I got home last night. Three shots of coffee did not do it. <laughs> But celebration of life. Today we're here to celebrate Jesus, the one who gave us life, that makes us want to be in the house of the Lord, to worship with our brothers and sisters, to praise Him, to glorify Him, and to just say thank you, Jesus, for another day, another day of living, another day of purpose, another day of, of being able to call upon Him. You know, there are times in our lives where things are just going and going and going. And it's like, this is great. And then we hit a bump in the road and our faith is tested. But then we come into an atmosphere like this and then we're encouraged and we're built up. And we leave and we're like, thank you, Jesus, for my community, my family of believers that can help me, that can encourage me. And so today, will you stand with me? And when you stand up, just turn around here in the auditorium and just wave. Just wave at somebody. Say, hey, I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here today. We welcome those that are visiting with us. We welcome those that are um, Juan back in the sound booth. We're so excited to have Juan in for the weekend from Vegas. You know, he was our guy and he took a job over there. But isn't it wonderful? He comes home and he serves. So thank you, Juan, for being here this morning. We appreciate you and love you and miss you and Annie so much. But will you join me in prayer as we get ready to worship? If you don't know the songs today, you can just hum. Or you can do like I do, make up your own words. It's okay, because it's about your praise and your worship to our Savior today. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. This day that we can come in here and celebrate the goodness of you. Lord, we come in today saying thank you for another week of living, of breathing, of witnessing, of sharing, even of trials and tribulations, because Lord, we know they work something in us for good when we are confident that you are in the process. Lord, we thank you for weekends like this of celebration and honor and glory. We thank you for new life. We thank you for what you're going to do even as we come together for this hour and a half, corporately worshiping you, giving you all praise and glory. We thank you for this in your name. And everybody said, amen. Yeah. 
to his voice and look even if it means stepping out of your comfort zone amen hallelujah even if it means doing things that you're not used to doing amen raising your hands stomping your feet raising your voice amen you we have to lead, let the Holy Spirit lead us amen place to do it. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You deserve the honor. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. God. If you 
want to come up just and just praise him. Bend your knees. He did us the glory and the honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come upon us. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I ever be. No place I ever be. No place I ever be. Here in your love. Here in your love. Sing it out with your voice. Pastor D says, if you don't know the words, sing your own song. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Surrender. This is my surrender. 
As Richard continues to play this, I just feel really strong that we need to respond 
this morning. The things that are holding you back. If there's something, somebody, some situation that has been just nagging at you and you think I've turned it over to Jesus, but it's still there and it's not going away. He's saying today, come and surrender it. So I'm going to ask you, I know this is unusual. I don't usually do this, but I'm, I'm just so impressed by the Holy Spirit right now. You don't have to tell us what it is. Just come as a point of saying, God, I'm surrendering at this altar. And I'm going to ask you if it's for healing, it's for relationship, it's for maybe it's a, a situation that someone has just been really ugly with you and spoken evil over you and, and have really just challenged your character and your integrity. And he's saying, no, no, that's not who you are. That's what they say you are, but that's not who he says you are. Come down here and surrender that this morning. Make that step to come forward and just say, Lord, here is where I lay it down. All forms of religion, all forms of things that I think, well, if I would just have done this, this wouldn't have happened. That's not true, folks. There are things that happen in the spiritual realm, yes, that we invite in. And there are things that the enemy brings in to try to destroy us and to keep us from growing to that next level. And today he's saying, today, make it right. Today, get over that hump. Today, surrender it. So as he sings through this one more time, and just this chorus, the things that I'm chasing that are not of you, God, I don't want to chase them anymore. I only want to chase what you have for me. And you only know that by your surrender to him today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, as we come and we surrender to you today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to I want to make room Do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. I wanna make room for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do whatever you want. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do whatever you want to. i yeah. 
Lord, and as we have done that today, we have laid down those things that so easily have weighed us down and saying, Lord, we give them to you today, Lord. And we're believing, Lord, that you're breaking down walls of false images that are not according to your word, of things that we think have to be done a certain way, because we know that you say that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, but Jesus, today is today, and we want you to do something new today in us, because Lord, we know that you did it yesterday, but we need it today. And we believe your word that says where we are in agreement together, that you are here in our midst to do that so as these have been down here as those that are out in the audience and those that are online have been praying and interceding and surrendering lord we feel we know that the weights are being lifted the hope is being restored the pain is leaving bodies the anguish is leaving bodies the fear is leaving spirits and minds that are just lord what are you doing and we're saying lord what are you doing what do you want to do today a fresh and a new that's what we've been inviting you to that is what this time has been about and for those of you that are online i just really sense that they're at that place where you are make that altar and you can participate and just say lord this is what i needed today and we haven't even had the whole service yet but lord thank you that you heard my cry and you met me even through this time of worship because lord you are not in a box and we know that you move freely in our lives as we allow you to. So as we have surrendered to you today, whether we're online or we're here, Lord, we know that you're meeting us here. You're meeting us here today. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the healing, Lord, for those that are suffering in their bodies, that you're touching them, that you're bringing life and restoration. Today, I bring my nephew and my great nephew to you, Lord, as they both are being challenged in their bodies physically. Lord, you know Gary and you know Nolan, Lord, and I lift them up to you. Lord, my nephew is to give his daughter away in three weeks and he has to have a heart procedure this week so lord we're praying that this doctors will have wisdom that he'll be able to go to missouri and give his daughter away in marriage lord for his son her brother who has this weird infection in his body lord and that you will touch nolan as he's in riverside right now and you'll bring healing to nolan lord and not only will you bring healing will you show yourself faithful to the long family today Lord, for those that are fighting cancer, we bring Michelle Robbins to you today. Lord, that you will touch and continue to work in her. Lord, for others in our church that have been going through so many trials and tribulations, for Evangelina's family who has lost two loved ones in the last two weeks, Lord, we give them to you today and ask, Lord, that you bring hope and encouragement and peace, Lord. Lord, in the mystery of why things happen the way we do, we have to trust you. And that's what we're saying today. In my pain, I'm making room for you today to come and be God, to do what you said you will do. Because, Lord, you love us that much that you care when we hurt and when we cry and when we're moved with the infirmities of others, whether those be physical elements, spiritual elements, Lord, that you will be there and you will touch and you'll restore and you'll bring hope once again, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as we're approaching Pentecost Sunday, next Sunday. But even today, your Holy Spirit is here just like it was in the upper room when you fell on the 120. Today you're falling on us, even in preparation for this last eight days leading up to that day that we celebrate of the outflowing of your spirit. 
fall on us today. Fall on us today, Lord, afresh and anew. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Yes, let's just worship him. Shout, clap, whatever you're comfortable doing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you're faithful. Thank you that you're always, always, always on time. You're never, ever late, Lord, and we rejoice in that, Lord. And we give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet spirit that is here. Thank you, Jesus. I just have a quick verse. To, you can stay where you are for a moment, but just have a quick verse to share. As I was, as I was praying for an individual and friend and for his wife that's been a long-term member of our church for years and years since she was just a little tiny girl. And um, there's some things that she's going through. And then there's another person who's going through a lot of things that is very dear to us who was a little girl when she was in this church as well and actually knew parents before she was ever born. But here's the verse. Jesus Christ was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil. Anything that comes against you and tries to put some sort of bondage or, or something upon you that is not of God, you know what? That's a work of the devil. And Jesus Christ appeared. He came. He came to earth. He was made manifest to us to destroy all those things that the enemy would want to bring against his people. He was made manifest to destroy. He was made visible. He was made to, that we could understand who he is to destroy the works that the enemy would want to bring against us. He has no power. He has no authority to do that. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in Matthew 28, 18. All authority has been given to me. And why did that, was it that authority to give to him? Because he wanted in turn to give it to us so that we could walk in that authority. We could have the keys of the kingdom, which is the authority of the believer. The authority that we have in Christ Jesus as a believer. What is it that the enemy has been attacking you in? What is it that he's been trying to hold you in? What's he been trying to keep you from? We we're talking about things today and about, you know, praying. We're talking about the Holy Spirit as we've been doing this now for the last several weeks. And, you know, we took a little time out for Mother's Day. But even in that, you know, we were just, we're, we're proclaiming the things of God's Spirit, what he wants to do. Jesus was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And if he destroys the works of the devil, he's going to replace that with something good, something of his freedom, something to give us life, something to bring us joy. So he destroys the works of the devil and replaces them with his good works, that we're able to do the things of God. He, he came to us and placed his Holy Spirit in, in us that we could do the works of the kingdom. We're going to talk more about that today. I guess we'll get there. Who knows? But you know what? God wants to do that. Jesus wants to do his work in and through us. Through us. Changing all that stuff that's going on, our mindset, our hearts, our mouth, things we speak, change all those things around that we might be used of him, that are the things that we do would glorify him, the things we say and do would be, a, be lifting up others and bringing others to Christ. The greatest way to destroy the works of the devil is, is just walking in the things of Jesus and helping others do the same. He wants to keep people from coming to Christ, but he's chosen you to go and tell the whole world about him, that they may know the truth. So what are we going to do? See, these are times where we come to choices in our own life. When, when, when we're hearing these things, we can say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, but will we make a change in our lives? Will we move a little bit closer to Jesus and say, okay, God, I'm going to do it your way. 
I'm going to let these things subside. I'm going to stand in the, in the things of God and in the power of the Almighty Lord who, and the power of His Spirit who's come to us to transform us, to make us more like Him. And in the process, we'll bring glory and honor to Him and we'll see other people come to know who Christ is as well and see them take another step forward in the things of God. This is what it's all about. I need you, you need me, we need each other. And surely the world needs every one of us. They need every one of us. Just look at our world. Listen to the news for five or ten minutes. And you'll hear enough to pray forever. Really will. Just listen. Listen to the demonic things that are happening in our world. Listen to the way you're trying, people are trying to change the things of God from the way God purposed things to be. And the message of the day is don't do it God's way because he doesn't know what's right. We know what's right. Well, isn't that the word of the enemy? I want to, you know, I will be like the most high God. No, you won't. You never will be. You've diminished to a zero according to the word of God. The only thing that gives him power is people submitting to the things of the enemy rather than the things of God. Yeah. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. And what follows that? Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? Amen? Come on. Give him praise, people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to transition here a little bit and make some announcements and receive the offering. We will be taking two offerings this morning, one your tithes and offerings, the other um, missions. So as you prepare to give to Foursquare Missions as well, we'll be receiving that separately. This week, we will be having the memorial service for Regina Jackson McNeil. It'll, the viewing will be on Wednesday from 1 and the times are a little, um, I'm not quite sure if it's 1 to 6 or 2 to 4, but um, we'll, we'll clarify that if you want to call. It's at Harrison, Ross, and Compton. And then the service will be on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. at the mortuary as well. So if you could come out and support Ricardo, uh, the kids, um, Micaiah, Tiffany, and Ricardo Jr., and the grandkids, that would be really greatly appreciated. And so if you have any questions, call the office or call our cell phones, and we'll give you those details about that. But we want to celebrate the life of this lady who, for years, brought her daughter to church faithfully, even in some very weird times. And God just used Regina in a mighty way, even in her family. So come out and support her this week if you can. It'll be greatly appreciated. Also, um, there's no extra Bible studies this week, but that doesn't mean you're off the hook. There is Friday night youth, there is Saturday morning prayer, and next Sunday is um, Pentecost Sunday, so come. We're going to have a special service on Monday. The Foursquare Pastors Conference starts in Anaheim. As of right now, they have over 7,000 people attending this conference. So if you could volunteer and would love to go to the Foursquare Convention in Anaheim, see myself or Carly after church, they need children's workers desperately. We have over 700 pastors kids and missionaries kids that are coming to this convention as well. It's in our backyard and if you would like to see what we do outside of the walls of your church but what we do globally, this would be a wonderful opportunity for you to serve and like we said we need them from the babies up to uh, young, next gen um, as they have uh, Monday night, all day Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday, it ends at noon. If you could fill in any of those time slots, let us know. We'll connect you to those people. Right now, they are desperate for workers. And you won't be alone. No, registration is not included that way. It's just a volunteer. You will be compensated if you work so many hours for meals. Um, but Carly has all the details. Um, to go to the convention, if you want to attend, you do. You can only attend one session because there's, they're over... 
registered already and it may not even guarantee but you can go online and see if you'd like to attend one of the services we don't even know who the guest speakers are or who's speaking what services because of just the dynamics this is our hundredth anniversary of a denomination and it's going to be an amazing time literally it's at the anaheim convention center so if you have any questions it starts next monday memorial day in the evening at 6 30 and um, so anything that we can do to kind of help you, we will be all going and being there, um, staying there on campus of the uh, convention center. So, but be praying. Um, this is the largest delegation they've ever had in the history. And so it's exciting. And Carly works for them and, and our daughter-in-law, and they are just, they're, they're like up to here working, um, just trying to get all these things done. But you're part of that. By coming here to LifeGate, you're part of that. And you get to reap the benefits as we give today. We do have some other things coming up in the summer. We have kids camp, youth camp, fireworks booth, women on June 23rd, a Friday night. We're having a get-together at Rose Blanco's home. She's in the back with the kids today. So we'll, that information will be coming out. The men had a great event here yesterday and had a time out here in the backyard. And uh, I heard some good things about that. So there was things always happening. Just check your text messages, your emails. Spread the word. This is good gossip. This is what we're doing. It's not gossip. It's fact, right? We are getting together. So we, these things will be coming to you. Um, in the ne next few days. So as you prepare to give your tithes and offerings and the ushers come forward this morning, we just want to again just thank Jesus for his continual provision. How he protects you because you're faithful to him in this area. In this area. There's so many areas he asks us to be faithful to him in. But this one is one that has a promise with it as well. All of them do, but this one has a big promise. If you will be faithful to me, I will be faithful to you. What does that look like for you? I don't know. I know what it looks like for me. I know the things God has done for my family as we've been faithful. So as you're faithful today in your tithes and offerings, just know it's not giving to the church, it's giving back to him. Yes, the church benefits, but it's giving back to him according to his word so that the gospel could continue to be spread. So you could sit here today with lights and air conditioning and comfort. A lot of people are sitting on the floor in the hot sun in the desert somewhere, but they're there because they want to, they want to find Jesus and they want Jesus to meet them. And we get, we'll be taking a missions offering in just a moment. So as we give today, Lord, as you, you prepare, Father, we thank you that as we're giving to you our tithes and our offerings, according to your scripture, that we will be blessed, that our barns will be full and overflowing. Lord, I don't know what that barn looks like for somebody else, but I do know what it looks like for myself and my family and how you have continually kept us and met us. So today, I know that's true for all of these that are giving, whether they're here or they're giving online, Lord, that you will meet them according to your riches. We thank you for that in your name. Amen. And as they come by and receive your offering, they're going to come right back down and pick up the missions offering. Um, but today is Mission Sunday. And... Um, our missionaries will be here next weekend at the convention, and um, we're so excited to hear what's happening in their area of service. Rosie's daughter, who's a missionary, is here, and we're going to be hearing from Melissa, hopefully, why she's here, um, and seeing what God is doing around the world. But you know there's something we do every month is that we give to help Rosie's daughter, our missionaries, Dan and Susan, to live on the field, to be able to, to minister this way, to sacrifice the comforts of the United States, to learn a new language, to go. And so today they're also asking again, they're pushing, they're really wanting us to donate our used Bibles. We got another email from Bob Hunt saying, please tell the churches, how many of you have Bibles on your shelf you never use? My hand's really high. I just love to buy Bibles, and sometimes I get them given to me, and I'm thinking, some of them are sentimental, they have notes in it, and I'm thinking, Do, I don't want to give my Bible, but yet I'm not using it. And there's somebody in a foreign country that reads English, can use my Bible, 
and benefit from my notes. So please, if you have Bibles, if it's paperback, if it's hardback, if it's leather, and you just, you feel impressed, bring them in the next few weeks so we can take them and they can get in those crates and be shipped to the African speaking nations that have speak English. The other countries where they speak English, they don't have it. And we can bless them. So that's one way you can give to missions today. Another way is with your offerings that are above your tithes. Don't forget if you sponsor Dan and Susan, they count on that. So if you are, are sponsored there, and if you just, you don't know where you wanna plug it in today, you could just put four square missions on your envelope there and give to that. And it will go to the most needed resource at this time. I'm so excited that next Sunday, they're having what they call the Global Summit with all these people from all these nations that are serving four square around the world. They're going to be meeting at Angela's Temple, how appropriate, on Pentecost Sunday at 2 o'clock. That is a registered event. You would have to register for that, again, because of space and so forth. But we get to come together and rejoice. Sidebar, if you can't go to convention, we will send out the link. You can watch it online. There will be services online. So today as you give and the ushers, I'm waiting for the ushers to come back down, uh, that we will give. Just think, who brought you to Jesus? What were the circumstances? And if you could ever repay them, how would you do that? By helping someone else hear the gospel. I have a dear friend named Connie who was driving down here in Long Beach around the traffic circle. Avid reader, loved books, and she saw a book in the road. And she was in her 1966 Volkswagen Bug. She pulled over and parked and ran across all that traffic. You know that traffic there? That traffic circle? Many of you have tried to figure out how to get to the street you want? And she grabbed that book and it was a Bible. She read the Bible and she got saved all by herself by reading a Bible that she found in the Long Beach traffic circle. What you do has a great impact. How you partner has a great impact. Give today. Lord, we thank you that we can give to missions. We are blessed here in America. We have everything at our hand, at our fingertips. But Lord, today we can give our extra Bibles. We can give of our extra money. We can give that a missionary like Dan and Susan or, or Melissa, Rosie's daughter, who's given up everything of the comforts of the United States and goes to a foreign country. We can partner with people like that that have this unique call and we get the benefit as well because when a soul gets saved, we get a jewel in our crown too because we gave. So Lord, today we are excited to partner with missions around the world. We thank you for this in your name. Amen. And as the ushers come and you give this morning, would you just stand as we enter into one more song of worship with Richard and Ethan. Thank you for leading us this morning. Stop. 
Come on, everyone. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. we need is Jesus. Lord, we separate ourselves to you today. It's what we've been doing since the beginning of the service today as we entered into this sanctuary, into the place where we would meet with you collectively. Jesus, we thank you that you have come and you have been visiting with us, speaking to us by your spirit, allowing the freshness of your spirit to come upon us today, Lord God. We don't have to wait for what we call Pentecost Sunday or what you have, uh, what happened years and years ago. Lord, you are available to us 24 7 any day of the week. God, we're so glad that you are with us today. And all of these that are here today and those who have joined us online, they've separated themselves to you, to hear from you to set themselves apart unto you. Lord, we bask in your presence today. We know you will fill us if we ask. So I ask, Lord God, for you to fill me over and over and over again, fresh and anew. A fresh anointing to come, a fresh uh, new revelations to come, of, uh, a fresh understanding of who I am in you and even who you are. You are a God who loves your people. You've never refrained from that, but you continually give out of your goodness, out of your love, and you do it with joy. We thank you, Jesus. For your love today, we thank you for your word that is spoken to us in so many different ways. And today we get to hear it again in a new way, maybe some different thoughts. And God putting things together in a different way, but the same word that's always been your word. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, greet somebody around you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, bless somebody today. Do that. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that so very much. All right. That's good. Isn't it great to be alive today? Even with all the things that are going on around us and all the things that are frustrating and all the crazy drivers on the streets, isn't it great to be alive? Yeah. Are you looking forward to more? of all God has for you? Wow. I tell you what, there's nothing better than just look forward and to the things that God might have for us. How many of you know that Jesus has great things planned for you? Yeah. Things for you to receive, things for you to accomplish, things for you to do in partnership with him as you are guided by the Holy Spirit. 
See, and that's the good news. He'll do that. He will guide us by his spirit. And guess what? The the resurrection of our lives began with the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of our lives began with the resurrection of Jesus. How many can shout hallelujah to that? Amen? Because if God hadn't risen from the dead, I tell you what, we'd be dead in our trespasses and sins. But God made us alive in him because of what he did for us. You know, we used to sing a hymn. And it's called, There's a New Name Written Down in Glory. And I was going through my message this morning, early this morning, and that song came to me, and I'm going like, why? Guys, that's an old song. It's like, where did that come from? I haven't sung that in years, but I began to remember all the words to it. I looked up lyrics online because I couldn't remember the second verse, but, but it, 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 I love the chorus, but I love the verses too. And you may not know, know it, but my mom does. And she's down there, and if we had the piano set up, I'd just have her come play it. But I don't know if you've played this song in years either, Mom, but nonetheless, but it, was, it goes like this. I was once a sinner, but I came, pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. Well, those are good words, aren't they? Yeah. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. This is the second verse. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not but God's angry frown. When the heavens opened and I saw that my name, sorry, that my name was written down. I'm sorry, it just hit me strong. That my name was written down, written down in the Lamb's book of life. That's where your names are if you've given Jesus Christ your life. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. Hallelujah, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. Wow. That one just came out of nowhere to me this morning. But praise God, people, we have something to shout about. If we're a believer in Jesus, we've been saved, we've been set apart unto him, forgiven by Jesus who came to redeem us, purchase us with the price of his own blood. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, and that's something to shout about. Hallelujah. Come on. You know, if we were to go back in time after... Jesus' resurrection, we see Jesus appearing to his disciples. He begins to call them, uh, Luke begins to call them apostles. And he never goes back to the term disciples except for new disciples. So we see always the, the, the original disciples and the new one that comes along in, in Acts chapter 1. And, you know, he called them disciples, but then he moves to the term apostles, and and Luke, who wrote the book of Acts and also wrote the book of Luke, never goes back to using the term disciples in the terms of the original disciples, but always calls them apostles. It's kind of interesting. But we see Jesus appearing to his disciples in Jerusalem, in Galilee, because he knows, you know, they went fishing and went back there, and he appeared to them in Galilee, it says that. And we would, have, we would recognize that this would be, after Jesus' resurrection, the 43rd day. So today is the 43rd day after Easter. Pentecost comes on the 50th day. Pente meaning 50. So Pentecost, and that's why we call ourselves Pentecostal, because it's the day of Pentecost, the, the, you know, the, um, um, the feast that went on celebrating all of that. And, uh, um, and so here is the 50th day is next Sunday. So it's important for us to be here, but just as important for us to be here every week. 
you know, all the time with each other. You know, they were told to wait. We talked a little bit about that a couple of weeks ago, so I'm catching up with some of the things we shared, but they were told to, to wait, but they weren't told how long they were going to have to wait. But wait, they did. And he told them to wait for the promise of the Father. The message this morning, especially for Kyle, is prepare for outpouring. Where is Kyle this morning? Where are you? There you are. Prepare for outpouring. He's going to type that in there. (laughs) Get that right. He's so busy. He's guiding all these guys, flipping cameras back and forth and all of that. So bless you, Kyle. Thank you for all the work you do and putting this online. And the people online are giving you a shout out right now. We love Kyle for doing all this and putting things online for us and helping us with that. And, and Juan is here, by the way. Juan has been, uh, Juan is hiding in the back there. But Juan came from Las Vegas. And uh, he was here a couple of days and thought he'd just drop on by and give me a break from the soundboard today. And so that's good news. So thank you, Juan. Appreciate that. Give him a big hand. Would you do that? And, and all of our team back there as well, all of our sound people and Everybody else who's doing the, the work, uh, cameras and all those kinds of things, and it's just wonderful. You know, we see many things av- advertised as, you know, prepare for out- outpouring is, is preparing to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But we're going to talk about the, the book of Acts and Acts chapter 1 in particular, but we see many things advertised as before and after. How many of you see all these kinds of commercials, right? You know, you see... Uh, a guy who, you know, weighs, uh, you know, um, 94 pounds and all of a sudden he builds himself up and looks like Atlas, uh, you know, Mr. Atlas there and, and all of those kinds of things. We see uh, weight loss commercials, you know, a guy weighed, you know, lost 160 pounds in just four weeks and all those kinds of things. And we see home makeovers, right? We see the houses that are there and all of a sudden, so we see the before pictures and after pictures. You probably have some of those things of your own, you know? Maybe for some people that refurbished a, 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 you know, a baby crib or a, a car or whatever it is. You took pictures before and then you took pictures after. You shared them on Facebook. This is before and after. You know, so we've done those kinds of things. Just the ball of yarn before I knitted it into a sweater, you know, <laughs> whatever. And so, um, so we see all those kinds of things simply where something was at the start and where it has progressed. That's called transformation. Things have changed, Right. In Genesis, we have a picture of man before the fall and after the fall, right? When he was created by God and then after he sinned. So we have that picture as well. In Judges, we see Gideon. Here's a fearful, insecure man before and then God speaks to him, you're a mighty man of valor, you know, through an angel there, and all of a sudden he turns into, you know, uh, uh, Conan the Barbarian. I mean, he turns into a warrior, right? Here's this guy that all of a sudden is just powerful and, you know, leads the 300. And, I mean, just mighty things happen. And he did that before that movie came out. And uh, about the other 300. Luke writes the book of Acts. And chapter 1 could be titled, Before, because it precedes Pentecost that comes about in chapter 2. From there on, it's definitely after. Everything is after. Everything is after. I can imagine that there may have been some some thoughts like, like, uh, you know, some thoughts uh, like, you know, Jesus just... Pour out the Holy Spirit upon us now. Eager to get to the day of Pentecost. Eager to get to the outpouring of the Spirit. They weren't knowing that it was going to be the day of Pentecost when this was going to happen. But they knew that Jesus said this would happen. Well, Jesus, just do it. Why do I have to wait in Jerusalem? Why do I have to wait in this line? Wherever we are, the market. Why do I have to wait, 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 wait? But something happens when we wait. And something happens when we anticipate. And something happens when we expect God to do something that he said he would do. How eager are we 
to allow God to impart his spirit on us fresh and anew. How eager are you if you've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit to do what Jesus has told us to do throughout his word and what, what it says in the epistles to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. There's something more powerful as we would be filled with the Spirit and keep on being filled over and over and over again. Keep full. You know, we drive our cars and all of a sudden the tank starts emptying. We see the needles start going down. Wouldn't it be great if we could just keep on driving and it would stay on full all the time? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, yeah. And I don't even care if it's electric or gas, but I mean, it needs to stay on full all the time, right? Because it still costs you money even if you have an electric car. It still costs money. And so, you know, it would be nice if it just stayed on full all the time. That's what Jesus wants for his people. He wants us to stay on full all the time. He wants our needle to stay on full. If we let it diminish, man, all of a sudden we, you know, we're, we're, we're getting lower and lower and lower and lower and pretty soon I'm going to have nothing left to give. I better get re-energized again. But he wants us to stay there. That's why he says be filled with the Spirit. Continually be filled over and over and over again. For us this morning, I want us to take a look at, the, at Luke's introduction to the book of Acts and to the transforming power of Pentecost. That's what he's introducing. And um, let's give some thought to the way that Luke prepares us for what is yet to come. I want us to read through Acts chapter 1. Just going to read read through it, if that's okay. Acts chapter 1. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. In my first book, I told you about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he ascended to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions from the Holy Spirit during the 40 days after his crucifixion. He appeared to the disciples from time to time and proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. On these occasions, he talked to them about the kingdom of God. In one of those meetings, he was eating a meal with them. He told them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you what he promised. Remember, I have told you about this before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So let me give you three things we're going to look at in Acts chapter 1 and break down this chapter for you just briefly. In verses 1 through 11, we have from Christ's resurrection to his return. From Christ's resurrection to his return. We just read some some verses here. We haven't gone through verse 11 yet. But in this, we see that we're in verse 3, in his presence. Isn't that a great place to be? In his presence. That's what he was saying right here. He appeared to the, the apostles from time to time. They wanted to be in his presence. He wanted to be in their presence. He appeared to them. He came to them. Some people think Jesus never comes to us. We always have to go after him. Jesus comes to us all the time. We may not be responding, but Jesus comes to us all the time. He's longing after us. He's longing for that relationship. He wants us to be close to him. Bless you. (laughs) Says he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. Jesus wants to show us all the time that he is doing things on our behalf, that he loves us, that he's alive and that he's working with us and he's working through us and he's working in the midst of our, our situations and our problems and our difficulties. This is what he's doing. You know what? God began to do that this morning with us. And some of you really received something from God already this morning. Some people that are dealing with anxiety and depression. Somebody I was praying with this morning. Somebody I prayed with yesterday. Some things talking about people that somebody else was sharing with me. You know, where people are... Got some people in rehab that are going through some difficult times and, and trying to get through some, you know, get delivered from some things. Jesus wants to set us free. And he comes into our presence, but will we receive him? He shows us himself. Will we receive him? In verse 4, 
it talks about listening to Jesus. It says in one of those meetings, he was eating a meal with them. He told them. He told them. When Jesus talks to us, are we going to listen? He told them. Are they listening? It says, do not leave Jerusalem. Will we not only listen, but will we do what he asks us to do? It says, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you what he promised. So we see the promise that's here. Don't leave Jerusalem. He promised. And what did he promise? He promised that the, the Father's going to send the, the, what he promised, which is the Holy Spirit. Remember, I have told you about this before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days. Well, that's good news. At least they have a reference point. They've got a few days. A few days. I'm not sure what they meant by a few days. I was over with Sessie's uh, 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 at Sessie's party last night as, uh, you know, they had a party for her graduation and all that coming through, uh, you know, the years of Bible, Bible college and now is a licensed minister and I'm in process of having her appointed to LifeGate Church as a pastor here. And so, uh, you know, that's a wonderful thing, right? Yeah, and so she's going to be uh, with us as well, and so that's great. So we went there last night, and uh, so th we, they had a taco guy there, and he was doing all this stuff, and so he had these uh, these things. I uh, called them quesadilla. Uh, so he used vidia, uh, and uh, if I said that right, and um, anyway, with uh, with the cheese and so forth, you know. So it was kind of a uh, it was a kind of a uh, quesadilla with. Uh, how do you say it? Vidya? Did I say it right? Okay. Close enough? All right. Close enough for, <laughs> close enough for a gringo. Okay. And so, um, all right. So uh, anyway, but basically it was just shredded beef and whatever. So they put that in there and, and whatever. So I said, yeah, give me a couple of those or whatever. So we put two on the plate. I said, a couple. He says, well, a couple to us is at least three or more. I mean, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, so anyway, he threw a bunch of them on there. And so we were just eating and having a good time. He was having a meal with them. And during that meal, he told them and says, listen up, I've got something to tell you. In just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hmm. That's interesting. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Let's go on. We're going to read through verse 11. When the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, are you going to free Israel now and restore a kingdom? The Father sets those dates. He replied, and, that, and they are not for you to know, but when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power and will tell people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It was not long after he said this that he was taken up into the sky while they were watching and he disappeared into a cloud and they were straining their eyes to see him. Two white-robed men suddenly stood there among them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing here uh, staring at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven and someday just as you saw him go, he will return. He says, what are you doing standing here? Go do what he told you to do. Get out of here. Well, maybe he'll appear again. Go through the cloud and maybe I'll get another glimpse. You know what? Jesus already did what he needed to do. He told them what he needed to tell them. And now it was up for them to go and do what he said. Listen. Verse 12 through 14, we see waiting in Jerusalem. Verses 12 through 14, it says this, uh, the apostles were at the Mount of Olives when this happened, so they walked a half mile back to Jerusalem. Then they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here is the list of those who were present. How many of you in your Bibles that say a Sabbath day's journey? In your Bibles, it says a Sabbath day's journey. Yes, several of you there? Okay, what's a Sabbath day's journey? So a Sabbath day's journey it, in the, on the Sabbath, you were limited to how far you could walk. Okay? There were a lot of rules so, of the Sabbath. So they had a lot of rules. So the rules that was that you could only walk about three-quarters of a mile on the Sabbath day. But they were at the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives is right next to Jerusalem. We've been there. Frank just was there not too long ago. And... Uh, and so uh, 
Um, Frank was just in Israel, and so that's great. And he'll have to tell us about that one of these days, right? Yeah. And so he had a good time, and, and uh, so it would be good to him, for him to share some of those insights for us, and refresh uh, some of us that have been there and some of us that have never been there, give us a little bird's eye view of, of what that was all about and, and what he gained from that. But in verses 12 through 14, we, we see him saying this, that, uh, you know, they went from the Mount of Olives, so they walked just a half a mile. So they went to where Jesus told them to. Then they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. So it's kind of their headquarters. It was kind of where they've been staying for a while. Now, they didn't stay there all the time because we do read that Jesus saw this, uh, them in at least some of them, uh, one on the road to Emmaus, another one on the road to, you know, uh, up in Galilee. So, you know, they weren't there all the time, but it seemed like the gathering place that they were staying when they were in Jerusalem. Then they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying, and here's the list of those who were there. And of course, it's a, it lists out all the uh, disciples, and now they call them the, the apostles. It says, they all met together continually for prayer. Some of your Bibles will say prayer and supplication, along with the mother of uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. So this is waiting in Jerusalem, the second part from verse 12 through 14, waiting. We don't always like to wait, but it says prayer and supplication. What were they doing while they were waiting? They were praying. They were supplicating. You go, what is that? Well, we'll talk about that maybe if we can get there. Um, maybe not. Um, verses 15 through 26 it's interesting that this is thrown in here, and, and, and Luke actually writes several verses about this next thing that they were doing, and it, was, um, it, it almost seemed out of place with what was going on. So all of a sudden, you know, Peter comes to the scene, and he stands up and gains their attention and says, hey, we've got to do something here. This is important. As you know, Peter was guiding a lot at that, at that day. It says, during this time on a day when about 120 believers, in verse 15, were present, Peter stood up and addressed them as follows. Brothers, it was necessary for the scriptures to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided the temple police to arrest Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit speaking through King David. Judas was one of us, chosen to share in the ministry with us. When it talks about speaking through King David, there's some psalms that talk about these kinds of, this kind of activity, what was going to happen. Verse 18, Judas bought a field with the money he received from, for his treachery, and falling there he burst open, spilling out his intestines. The news of his death spread rapidly among all the people of Jerusalem, and they gave the place uh, the Aramaic name uh, Akaldama, which means field of blood. Peter continued, this was predicted in the book of Psalms where it says, let his home become desolate with no one living in it, and again, let his position be given to someone else. So those two references are Psalm 69, 25 and 109, verse 8. So now we must choose another man to take Judas' place. It must be someone who has been with us all the time that we were with the Lord Jesus, from the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us into heaven. Whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. So they nominated two men. Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. When they all prayed for the right man to be chosen, O oh Lord, they said, you know every heart. Show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas, the traitor, in his ministry, for he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and in this way Matthias was chosen and became an apostle with the other eleven. Interesting. Filling the vacancy left by Judas. That's the third section here. The Old Testament way of appointing and making decisions on many occasions were by casting lots. In other words, throwing a dice. If it lands on this, it's this. If it lands on this, it's this. In, 
in the tabernacle with the priests. In the tabernacle days, the priests had the Urim and Thummim. And, you know, we don't know exactly what those things were, but they were on the breastplate and they were to use those in making decisions. God evidently used that for them to make decisions and they believed that when they did this, the right thing would show up and that was the decision that they were to make. Of course, they prayed about that and then they rolled the dice. Don't go to Vegas and do that. Right, one? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, oh, God bless this. All right. And uh, you might just end up with snake eyes somewhere and have, a, have an issue. All right. Uh, so, so we see this. It was the Old Testament way of appointing. But what's the New Testament way? Anointing. Where Jesus separated people to himself based on, through prayer and us being able to hear and the men and women of God at this time being able to hear and know what God wanted them to do. We see that happening in the life of Paul and, and Barnabas as they were separated to do the work and, and then they were sent them out because it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to them that this is what would happen. And then we see it with Paul and Silas as well. And we see other issues taking place and where people went. We see Jesus doing an amazing thing with Peter when he let the, the sheet down with all the animals in it where Peter said, you know, where uh, the Lord said to him in this vision, kill and eat. And he says, not so, Lord. It's unclean stuff. And he, you know, he says, what I've considered clean is clean. And so he went and he spent some time with the Gentiles in their home, in the house of Cornelius. And even before they were baptized in water, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And these people just went on praising God. Then they were baptized because, hey, how can we withhold it from them now when, when they've already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Wow. Amazing things that God was doing in their midst through the anointing of God, not going by the way of the Old Testament. That was before. But after was something different. So this is the before. They were still rolling the dice. Not saying that God wasn't in it because they were believing that it was and that the right person was appointed. And I'm sure either of them would have done fine. We never hear of Matthias again. That doesn't mean he wasn't active. That doesn't mean he wasn't doing anything. They were talked about as a group, but it's never talked about as an individual. It's interesting. But that doesn't mean that he wasn't worthy or worthwhile or there wasn't something happening in his life. Who knows? Maybe he went so far off out of, out of the way that nobody knew exactly what he was doing, but he was spreading the gospel like he was told to. That's something I have to believe, that he was doing the work of the kingdom. They were dependent on the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. That's the after. That's the after. That's where we come to. And that's where we are to be, dependent on the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. The book of Acts is a continuation of the book of Luke. So we've read these verses, and, and in verse 4 and 5, it said, Stay in Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes the hardest thing to do is wait. But there's a purpose in waiting. We prepare ourselves. We prepare our mind. We prepare our heart. We begin to anticipate and cultivate a hunger and expectation for what God has said would take place. And in this case, in a few days. It might be a few years. But are you going to wait for God to finish what he needs to in order for us to receive of what he wants us to? We get antsy sometimes. We get antsy. We don't like waiting. But we've had 50 days or 43 days up till now to wait. 43 days to pray. 43 days to begin to seek God and we have another week ahead of us. And I want to encourage you to pray like you've never prayed, to seek God like you've never sought God, to pray for your brothers and sisters, to pray for our young people, that they would see, that they would uh, receive an outpouring of God's Spirit upon their lives, that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Pray that the youth would come and we would see them here, and some of our young, young adults would come and, and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and walk in the power of God. They've had some great things happen 
and had a wonderful thing happen this past Friday night. So they have great things, but we want them to be together with us too and I want them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But it's not just them, it's about us. Will we be separated unto the Lord to receive of what God has for us and anticipate a freshness, a renewing, a, uh, a fresh anointing and a, a you know, just being um, filled up over and over and over again. That promise, what they were to wait for, according to Acts 1, 4, and 5, this baptism of the Holy Spirit was empowering His people collectively, the church. They should have got, that should have got them really excited. But then we look at, at verse uh, 6, I guess it is, um, in verse 6, and it said, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore a kingdom? Their minds. See, they haven't been transformed totally yet. They haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. They're th still thinking a lot in earthly things, the earthly dynamics. Hey, we want things to be right. Restore our kingdom. Whose kingdom? Our kingdom. What do you mean our kingdom? Free Israel. Restore our kingdom. And he said, the Father alone has that authority to set those dates and times. They are not for you to know. Basically, in our vernacular, don't worry about it. He's got it covered. Don't worry about it. It'll come along when, when it's time for him to do what, what's right. He'll take care of it. So he continues to tell them about the, the greatest thing that will happen for them, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Their lives would never again be the same. Don't get all caught up with the earthly kingdom. Don't get caught up with all the things that are going on around us. Don't get caught up with that fly that's flying around my head right now. Where's my chopsticks? The, the, the Father has that under control. Close. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. He tells them what's going to happen when they receive this power of the Holy Spirit, what they're going to, their purpose is going to be. You shall be. Not, hey, when you want to, you shall be. This is what's going to happen through you. This is going to be the dynamic of the transformation that's taking place in your life, the before and the after. Before you kind of, you know, did some things, but after, man, this is going to be in you. The Holy Spirit is going to be in you, with you and in you. Man, what a great revelation this is. You know, as, uh, as you know, we, we can be told about how great a certain restaurant is, how great an amusement park is, or any activity, but until we experience for ourselves, we really don't understand. If you've never been to Disneyland before, you can hear people talk about Disneyland and say, oh, how wonderful this is. Or you go back, my wife just went back with, with another uh, lady, you know, who's been friends of ours for many, many years. And, and, you know, she went back there with her and visited all four of the Disney parks back there. And she was telling me about all that stuff. And I said, oh, that's great, honey. She's all excited about it. I've only been to one of those parks, I think, or something. And, and so, you know, yeah, I said, yeah, it was great when I was back there, you know, which was like 25 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> am I that old? <laughs> and, um, and so anyway, uh, you know, she told me about all these great things, but I'm, I can't get so excited about it because I have never, haven't experienced it for myself. What I, you know, I can get excited about some things that I've been to that maybe others haven't. You know, I was, and, and you know, the warriors are out of it. I know, so my warriors are gone, 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 gone. And, um, but in 1975, I got to go to the championship games that were in Oakland and watch the Warriors win two of those games. And I got to see them personally. You were hugging people, high-fiving people, loving on people. I don't care. They could be as drunk as a skunk and have beer all over them, but you were hugging and slapping high-five, and you've never seen such a mess in your life. But you fell in love with people that you would probably normally be your enemy because you had a focus, 
and, and, and you were combining something, and you were to celebrate that, but you tell somebody else who's never been to one of those finals like that, oh my gosh, it's, it's just a world of difference. You can tell somebody about it, but they can't nearly get as happy as you because you lived it. Jesus wants us to live it. He wants us to live in the power of his spirit. He doesn't want you just to hear about it from somebody else and how good it is for someone else. He wants you to know it for yourself. And that's why we say when you, if you haven't been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues and, allowing the, and calling upon the Lord to, to give you other gifts of his spirit, you'll never re, you just can't realize the difference it makes in your life. Because it opens the doorway for us to do what God has called us to do. This is the way he said these things would happen. You say, well, that's just a bunch of gibberish, speaking in tongues, whatever. It may sound that way, but I tell you what, you don't know the power of it until you, the power of the Holy Spirit working through that until you've been there. Until you've received it. It meaning the tongue. Him meaning the person of the Trinity. God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Christ. Wow. It's great to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's great to be able to pray for others. And see them healed when you move in gifts of healings or, or gifts of faith and, and working of miracles. It's great when you're able to prophesy over someone because those things aren't about you. It's about the other person. And that's what, what's so exciting is, hey, I'm not doing anything. It's Jesus that's doing it. I'm just kind of, you know, just doing what he tells us to do. And then others are being the recipients of what God wants to do. I just get to be part of it. So it feels good when you see other people, you know, receiving things. This was Jesus talking to them. And he's talking to you. And if you haven't been, haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, prepare for outpouring. Prepare for outpouring. In that upper room, 120 people for 10 days prayed in unity of mind and purpose. And we know prayer is simply communicating with God. Don't you love it when you not only speak, but you get a response? And in verse, verse 14, it says they were in one accord, prayer and supplication. Supplication. According to the Word of God, you can make supplication. And that's where you begin to enter into the place of control and binding where we draw lines as directed by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach you what to pray. He'll teach you to pray. And God is not obligated to answer our prayers without us consulting with Him and gaining understanding of His will. And that's what happens when we are in supplication. Supplication is where I come into conference with God. Father, what is your will in heaven that I may declare it on earth? It is where we are moving in partnership with the Heavenly Father. And His will for us is to learn how to move in response to what He is designed as intending and is intending to do in any given situation. So what happened as they continued with one accord in prayer and supplication? The Holy Spirit came upon them. And they came, al and, and came alive within them. They were changed, inside and out, attitude, mind, heart. They were empowered to do what Jesus did on earth and more, to accomplish the task, to take the message of the gospel to the world, the gospel where he died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised from the dead on the third day. This is all talked about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. His death, burial, resurrection, they were empowered to continue Jesus' mission to save the world, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, to preach the message of the kingdom. You know, the Spirit came upon Jesus to bring forth a ministry of power. Luke 4, verse 18, 
it repeats what, it, what we find in Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is when he went in the temple and he picked up the book and he began to read from Isaiah. And he, he reads this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And you've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent you to heal the brokenhearted in his power with his authority. To proclaim liberty to the captives, those who are bound, those who are, 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 are tormented by the enemy. Jesus has come to set them free. Recovery of sight to the blind. Or you can bring healing to people in their misery, in their, in their physical ailments. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts is to empower the church, to empower his people for ministry. Boy, that's a great thing. What Jesus did will continue through his people. And Luke writes about it in his book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, where he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of, of God and to heal the sick. And this was before they were endued with power in the, in the New Testament where we see in the book of Acts chapter 2. Just think of what happens after that. The message of the kingdom. That's what we read in, in Luke 4. We see throughout the book of Acts of all the miracles that took place done by the believers, people just like you and me, people just like you and me. Praise God for all who have given their life to Christ. Whether it was last week, today, 100 years ago, it doesn't matter. Now you are to take the message that you've received and share it with others, inviting your friends, your neighbors to come to Christ, to bring them to church, to, to introduce them to other believers so that they can be saved and begin to grow in their relationship with Jesus. God loves us and we are saved as we confess Jesus as Lord and believe in our hearts that Jesus is risen from the dead. It is such a great thing to have received of His love and forgiveness and all we had to do was believe. And if you've never given your life to Jesus before, all you have to do is believe that Jesus died, was buried, rose again from the dead. Confess Him as Lord of your life. Believe. And we get to share our story. We get to tell what Jesus did for us. And we're going to move forward in our life with Christ to be more engaged as the Spirit-empowered church that He's called us to be, empowered for service. I would like you this week to read the book of Acts. Or, you know, or let me say it this way. I'd like you to pray Acts chapter 1. I'd like you to pray Acts chapter 1 and maybe the beginning of Acts chapter 2 as well. When Jesus was baptized, as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove in Luke chapter 3, verse 2. Later at the scene of the transfiguration, as, as Jesus was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes came, became as bright as a flash of lightning, it says in Luke chapter 9, 29. As we pray, so shall we receive the Holy Spirit. Pray as in Acts 1, 14. Ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to empower the people of LifeGate. Ask Him to empower your pastors, your leaders, and yourself. Because God wants to bring you to a new place in your walk with Jesus. To lead others. All of us are leaders. But what are we doing as we lead? How are we leading? You can lead. In Luke 11... Verse 11 through 13, it says, If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? 
Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Let's prepare ourselves through waiting and expectation and prayer and supplication to be the Spirit-empowered church to carry out his mission. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. We've had quite a time today experiencing Jesus right here and then allowing His Word to be preached and hearing maybe even explanations of what we just saw with a few people. But if you want to be prayed for, if you want God to do something special in your life, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to wait till next week, although we'll, we'll make another call next week. But why wait? Well, I'm being patient, like Jesus said. We're going to wait. Well, He told them to wait. He told us to get after it. He told us to get after it. He told us to go. The Holy Spirit's already come. It's just about us now opening up our, ourselves to receive of Him. And so if you want to be refilled with the Holy Spirit, you want the evidence of speaking in tongues, you want other gifts, maybe you, you, you do that, but you want other gifts to be added unto you. You've been asking God for the best gifts for yourself and you've been wanting God to do something new and fresh in you. Hey, come, we'll pray. We'll pray. You at home, hey, pray and, and seek God. And God may do something with you right there, but... We'd love to have you in church with us as well because I think it's important that we're together with one another. Well, we can pray. Amen? We can pray. And people come around you and pray. We'll pray over you. We'll, we'll, we'll see God do amazing works of His grace in your life. These gifts, these grace gifts, God wants to give them to you. So let's just open up ourselves to do that. So Lord God, as we close this service, Lord, we're going to just open up ourselves and open up the altars so some may leave and some may want to come to the altar. But Lord, as you would direct and as they would be listening to you, let them respond to do what you've asked them to do and that we would just simply set ourselves apart unto you in every way possible to do the work of your kingdom and to be used of you by allowing your Holy Spirit to work that transforming grace in our life. We give you praise and thanks today for that in Jesus' name. You come, Richard and, and Ethan are going to be leading us in some song, but as they're doing that, uh, you come and we'll pray with you right down here at the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. If you need to leave, you're more than welcome to do that, okay? So we're okay.
spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down King Jesus You're the name we're lifting I, your glory Shaking up the earth and sky Revival We want to see your King
Spirit break out Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Praise you Jesus Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. We're just allowing us to feel your presence. Hallelujah. To feel you, Lord. We ask that you just watch over us as we go home, Lord, and as we uh, exit the church, Lord. We just ask your blessings over us. Pour blessings over each one of us here and each one of us watching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.